Are you worried that your work environment might have become toxic, dangerous to your physical or your mental health? Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Davey, and I'm here with some options for how you can get out of that toxic environment and get to the team that you deserve. When we consider what your options are in a toxic work environment, the most important thing is to first think about what exactly is going wrong. Because depending on where the issue lies, that's where you're gonna find your different options. Let's start with a first category of ways in which work environments become toxic, which is uh, situations where the whole company is just a write-off. <laughs> And those do happen. So the first category of truly toxic organizations is situations where the policies, the procedures, the physical environment of the workplace are what's unhealthy. That may be because it literally physically is unsafe. There's toxic chemicals. People are, you know, using dangerous substances unwisely. There's things that are falling on your head. It could be literally physically dangerous. It can also be dangerous because you're expected to work long shifts and fatigue is what's putting you at risk. Other situations where the policies and procedures of the organization are toxic are not necessarily physically unsafe, but it might be that your organization has discriminatory practices. It could be that the way they schedule you just doesn't leave you time to address your own personal needs. It could be that the compensation isn't sufficient to earn a living wage, or at least you're not paid fairly relative to people doing other jobs. All of these fall in a category of places where the policies and procedures of the organization are what's unhealthy. And while I'd love to tell you to stand up and fight City Hall, what I know from experience is that fighting City Hall is incredibly difficult, whether that's going to a regulator, uh, going to an ombudsperson, raising a, a white flag around to HR or around discriminatory policies. It's really hard to be successful in this way. And unfortunately, even if you are successful, can be really disruptive and hard to build back relationships. So in many ways, if you find yourself in an organization where the policies, procedures, or the physical work environment are dangerous, it's likely best to just get out. The second category that is really prime for a big, quick resignation letter is a situation where the culture is toxic. It doesn't mean that things are written into the formal rules, but if you look at how people actually behave, and what the informal rules of the organization are, that it is really unhealthy. So it could be uh, a culture where people condone yelling and screaming and nasty behavior. It could be a highly passive aggressive culture, or even these days it could be a toxically positive culture where you know nobody can say anything uh, about risks or what's not working. Everybody just has to be happy all the time. So culture is another way that an organization can become pervasively unhealthy for us in all different kinds of ways. And if that's what you found, it's not just a few bad apples. It's actually the whole way the organization thinks and acts and what it values are harmful to your physical or your mental health, that's another situation where, again, you're probably not going to create change, at least not in the time frame that you can afford to be under these levels of stress, and it's best to tender your resignation. Before you do that, <laughs> put down your pen for a moment. Before you do that, I want you to think about trying to buy some time. So the first reason you wanna buy time is so that you don't have to quit your job and be without income while you look for a new job. If you can you know, get the peace of mind, get comfortable in yourself that you are gonna quit, but use the time to quietly apply for other jobs in hopes that maybe you'll have somewhere to go to without needing to be without a job for a period of time, that's really ideal. The other thing you wanna do in that cooling off period is you wanna see if you can leave as many of the relationships as possible in a good position. You just never know when somebody else is gonna come back into your life and you are really gonna be glad that you did things to leave that relationship in a healthy place. So if the organization's physical environment, policies, procedures, or culture are toxic, I completely agree with you. The best thing to do is get out of town. But if you're getting out of town, it's always best to take the high road. 
the cool thing is that in many cases, it's not your organization that's systematically a write-off. It's actually a more localized issue. And in that case, you have other options. So if your boss is the toxic one <laughs> or your colleagues, well, it's possible you might just want to quit your team. So what do I mean when I say a toxic boss? Well, in the description below, I have a catalog of 11 different toxic bosses. I think of myself like Charles Darwin categorizing the species. <laughs> We've got the uh, aggressive boss, the insecure boss, the flip-flopping boss, the incompetent boss. There are so many different types of toxic bosses. And in that catalog, I provide you with really specific advice for how to handle each one. But at some point, if you've realized that this toxic boss is taking a toll on your health, it can be a good decision to get out from under them. Similarly, you might have toxic colleagues. They're passive aggressive, they're nasty, they're constantly jumping in front of you to grab the spotlight and the recognition for your work. If you have either a toxic boss or toxic colleagues, you don't have to quit your organization, you can quit your team. And that means looking for paths in your organization to get out from underneath uh, the group that's really been harmful to you. What you wanna do in that case is start to build as many bridges as you can. Are there friends you have in other departments? Can you have a coffee with them? Former managers maybe who are now managing other teams, reconnect with them. Can you volunteer for cross-functional projects so that other people get exposed to your work and your contributions? All of these things are ways that you can raise your profile and find new opportunities to apply for jobs in other parts of the organization. Of course, make sure you're watching for internal job postings and if there's somebody in HR you feel comfortable talking to, talk about it with them as, you know, I'd love some development in a new area. Don't go complaining about your boss. That's not gonna help you try and find a position elsewhere. Frame it as a growth opportunity. So it might be finding a cross-functional team to participate in. It might just be joining the softball team. But whatever it is, if you have a toxic boss or toxic colleagues, you wanna quit that team and find a path out to another team in your organization. All right, let's consider one other scenario, which is your organization is great. Your team, awesome. Your customers, toxic. And unfortunately, this happens far too often these days. And if that's the case, you might not have to quit your team at all. You might be able to quit your role. And quitting your role just means getting a break from those customers who are really wearing you down. So imagine you're the business partner for IT for the Western region, and that Western region lead is a piece of work. Well, you can talk with your manager about it and ask if there's a chance that maybe you could support a different business unit for a while. If you've been working in the front of the house where customers are really abusive, can you move to a back office job. If you're dealing with a client as a lawyer or a consultant or an accountant, can you be shifted to another file just to get a break from a customer where maybe it just constantly feels like friction for you? All of these things are possible. If it's nothing in your organization that's the issue, it's simply the, the client or the customer that's the problem. So I hope I've given you a little bit of, of hope and perspective that you might not need to quit your organization even if you're facing a toxic environment at the moment. If that's what's right, then it, it is a good thing to do and just buy yourself a little time to do it in a controlled way. But if it's only your team that's the issue, quit that team. And if it's the customers, maybe you can just quit your role. So there is hope, but remember, if you're in a toxic situation, do not ignore it. It is too harmful to your physical and your mental well-being to live with that kind of stress over the long term. So please, please, please don't ignore it. But do think carefully about all the options that you have. I'm Dr. Leanne Davey, here to help you get that team that you deserve. Thanks so much for tuning in. And check out my other videos for how to's on dealing with some of the situations that come up when we're trying to make teamwork work.